All right, YouTuber David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating a problem with distortion on the mic line input on my Atomos Ninja 5. Now, before I get balls deep into this video, let me just explain a few things, right? What it is, this video is primarily being done to support an email for support for Atomos. So I'm going to send this video and an email to Atomos to find out what's going on. Also, as of right now, I am not saying that this problem affects every Ninja 5. I'm going to assume that right now it is only my one that does this. So I'm definitely not saying, ah, look at this, they're all broken, they don't work, none of that stuff. Also as well, the cabling and whatnot that I'm using here, I've got a Stellar X2 microphone here. It is plugged into a phantom power supply. That phantom power supply is then plugged into my Sony AX100. Now this cable is going to be done exactly the same way when I go direct into the ninja okay also um, I'm I'm doing like a, obviously a close VO here so there might be some plosives and stuff because this isn't actually the right foam filter for this microphone for when I get into these positions however the popping is not the problem we will clearly hear the problem when I flip over onto the example of the Atomos now I think that's probably everything that I kind of need to explain as I go along here anyway so right now what we are hearing is um, the audio and we should be able to see it there on the Atomos this audio is recording on the Atomos digitally so right now the audio is going into my camera and then the camera is sending its video and its audio down HDMI to the Atomos and what we should hear here is that this is like really clean and stuff anyways what i'm going to do now is flip over to the exact same kind of like level setting in the camera only what it is i have to stop and re-record because unfortunately my camera will not send out a clean hdmi when it is in record mode it only does it when it is in pause mode so right now i'm going to flip over to the camera only okay so i've just switched over to the camera on its own right now and this is just to give us an idea of exactly how how this sounds so realistically there should be no difference between this take and the previous take because the camera's microphone preamplifier is what was like you know sending the signal either internally to the camera as it is right now or externally via HDMI to the Ninja 5. Now the only real difference here actually is the Ninja 5 will be recording PCM so that'll be uncompressed audio and right now what we're listening to in fact hold on I was going to say this is compressed audio it's not this is XAVCS and I believe this is also PCM as well so realistically technically the audio file itself is probably exactly the same I think this does 16 bit the Atomos could be doing 24 but even if the Atomos is 24 it'll be 16 padded to 24 so theoretically no difference whatsoever actually I was about to say that there will be a difference because the Sony's compressing the audio to AAC or something but it doesn't it is it is uncompressed PCM as far as I'm aware so yeah this should all be good anyways rather than keep rambling like this about stuff that nobody wants to know about this was just an example for you to hear exactly what the uh, the audio sounds like coming directly from the camera now what i'm going to do is reconfigure this where i plug the microphone directly into the ninja okay so i've now flipped over so that the microphone is connected directly to the ninja as we should be able to see there and also we should be able to see the level there on the ninja itself now also as i've been doing this video i will have had somewhere in one of the bottom corners um the vu meters from my nle so i'm using resolve here so i'll have just done some screen capturing to show show um like the uh, the, sorry the vus out of the nle just so that you know exactly what's going on you should be able to have seen here i might have been zooming in and in and out a bit actually as i've been doing this just to show you the levels here however i think these levels will kind of come off the screen at some point but nonetheless i will have done something on the screen to show you the levels in post now a couple of other things here as well in this example i have not used my usual like post limiting okay so the 
output for this video will be slightly quieter than my usual YouTube stuff and whatnot. Um, and that's only because I just didn't want to introduce anything whatsoever in post, um, which may have kind of like skewed the results or anything like that. Also, the levels between the different takes, I'm not too sure how close they would have been in like you know like relative kind of volume between one another again i'm just trying to keep this as in and out as possible as i can get if that's proper english anyways yet yeah, so basically what i've done here then is on my camera when the microphone was connected to the camera i set an appropriate record level and as we've been able to see all the way through this there is no kind of peaking and hitting zero the peaks are quite healthy they're about probably minus six something like that maybe a bit lower a bit higher but that's where I like to record. Anybody who tells you you should be recording at like minus 12 or minus 20, that's absolute nonsense, right? When you're recording digitally, you can go up to any level you want as far as your VU representation is concerned, as long as you don't hit zero, right? And then in post-production, you can just bring that level up and down as much as what you want. Um, and obviously the same with the Ninja here as well. What I've done here, I've got an appropriate record level. So I've actually dropped down the mic input by I think minus 6 dB just so that I can get a healthy enough signal going in which gives me a slight bit of dynamic range at the top to kind of account for overshooting and it doesn't hit zero however here's the problem that I've also noticed second problem the actual ninja limits the audio <laughs> right so i mean technically speaking at the level that i've got it at there is no way it's going to clip whatsoever <laughs> well it won't clip the recording itself although the input level does actually have a limiter applied to it now what i'm going to do i'll try and show maybe some of the waveform or something if i can um so give you an idea of exactly what's going on with it now the thing is it's a weird limiter because the limiter is being applied i think pre preamp here so i think there's some form of weird protection going on if i have to surmise actually maybe not pre but if i have to surmise here i think what's happening is there's a limiter that's being applied is it even being done in the digital domain it might be i don't know but usually you use a limiter to protect the record level and not the input itself do you know what i mean so the input on any mic input which is like designed to work you know the way you expect it to that should have a wide enough dynamic range to account for like whatever signal you've got coming in and if you clip that input then that's your fault because you've just blasted it too high however that's not that is not what's going on here the input itself applies some kind of limiting now i'm going to surmise here that that is the problem the limiter is distorting the preamp now as we can obviously see we might not see it now on the screen hold on wait there can I flip it back on? Yeah, there's me record levels there, but regardless of what those record levels are, you'll have seen the same thing going on with my overlay from Resolve. And as you can clearly see, I definitely have not clipped the input. Anyways, I'm going to start rounding this video up now because hopefully this take here will have been enough to have proven the problem, okay? This thing here, or at least my one right now, isn't conforming to what it should do in any kind of professional recording chain. It is applying something by the sounds of it. Again, I'm surmising right now. It is applying something somewhere that it shouldn't. And what it's doing, it's basically restricting the dynamic range on the preamplifier as far as I can see. It may not be that. That limiter may be appearing somewhere else, but it most certainly isn't like, you know, post before the actual record level to protect zero. It definitely isn't doing that. Anyways, yeah, I think that'll kind of summed everything up and given people enough kind of information as to what's going on. So like I say, this is going to be sent off to Atomos and stuff anywhere. I'll point them at the video and what have you. And then whatever the results of are that, I will uh, I will do another video about that as well. Um, uh, hopefully that'll be soon. And and I'm hoping that this is just a problem with mine because I want to make one thing very clear here. Anybody who's familiar with my main channel might have seen a video where I was going on about like don't buy the Ninja 5 for HDR video recording from particular.
particular games consoles because contrary to what atomos had been publishing on their website about nine months ago it didn't work and i proved it showed videos of it and even when i got in touch with atomos one of their like support people even said it hadn't been tested with the ps5 however on their website it clearly said records hdr from the ps5 and it did not at the time now i'd sent my first one back because of that because it was definitely something that i needed it to do now i'd heard that there had been software updates to have cleared up that issue now whether it did or didn't clear up that issue i thought you know what it is actually a fantastic sorry in practice it is a fantastic device so we've got another one because rather than doing hdr for sdr stuff it's perfect so i thought well i get it for doing like a lot of me you know hdmi sdr recordings and stuff like that computer screen grabbing for tutorials you know games and stuff like that ps5 xbox whatever me ipads but the thing is the, the the function of it where you can record to like you know prores hq and you can record your microphone to separate channels than the you know embedded audio and stuff like that it's just it's just amazing it really is fantastic and it is a joy to work with the files in post as well because of course when you use something like this in fact i'll stop the ramble here i'm going to do a video on the best bits about the ninja 5 for somebody who wants to use one in post for like you know recording hdmi outputs from the likes of computers consoles game machines whatever basically anything other than what it is primarily designed for which is cameras because like i say it is unbelievable and the quality that it will afford you during your post process chain means that by the time you pump out something specifically for say youtube the quality you're gonna get at the end before the thing goes to youtube is immense it really is fantastic so i'm just hoping here that the problem that i've got is something which is inherent only with my unit anyway i've blabbered on like a psych psychopath here i'm gonna dive off but i will follow this video with stuff let me know in the comments anyway if anyone's got one of these doing something similar or even on camera if they're doing close video uh, with, with the ninja being used with the camera and stuff if you've noticed anything similar and stuff like that any who's if you've liked the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel click all of the bell notification icon all that cranky stuff i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now